gonna work. Oh. Hey Miriam. Okay. Cool. Perfect. I hate you. Oh, thank you. I think your face looks really good. It really doesn't. I and mostly I keep it. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a pandemic beauty. <laughs> pandemic princess. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. <laughs> Oh, God. Hi, Julia. Hi, Sequoia. Hi, Liz. Where to hi, people waving. This is so exciting. I feel like we're all in the same weird closet or something to together. <laughs> uh, how? So how is your pandemic going? Are you sheltering in place somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Are you with yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Sort of. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. How's your sheltering in place going? Great. Um, Gary canceled his meeting at noon so that he could watch us, which is like the sweetest thing anything oh, anyone's ever done for me. I'm like, God, that is the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so sweet. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Sweet. Wait, I'm going to turn up the volume. Oh, wait, no, the volume's already up. All right, you're just going to have to be louder, Miriam. Uh-oh, 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 can, can I, am I, am I hearable? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Oh, so give us a little heart, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had a, I had a brief freak out right before we went on because my, uh, my air conditioner stopped working all of a sudden. Oh, no. It, out, it was just the power needed to be tripped or something, but I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, it's not that hot today, but I'm already, I just started sweating, just, you know, just from this i'm a little sweaty but then yeah anyway <laughs> so do you have any highlights of the pandemic you'd like to share with anyone um highlights. That's beautiful what i'm just laughing at highlights from the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> shit any highlights from the pandemic i'm like i mean i've got low lights but but I, no highlights are really coming to mind. Well, <laughs> yes, I mean, and this is like, okay, so I'll just say this, like, <laughs> my school, you know, we were talking earlier about my school, right? And, um, and so my employers forced me to take administrative leave some months ago and and that was really unpleasant um and so i was trapped at home uh for a couple of weeks and then the pandemic struck and everybody got sent home and <laughs> i have to admit there was a little bit of pleasure in the irony that like you know the the powers that be attempted to quarantine me and then we all have quarantine <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> We're all in quarantine now, assholes. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Okay. My highlight was um was when I yelled at the, some old man. That was really fun. <laughs> you, who, did, who did you yell at? Why? There's like there's construction going on next door, which has been really hard when you're stuck at home in the heat. Just constant noises and smells. I mean, this is the first time I've ever had a backyard, and I can't go out in it because there's just you know toxic fumes happening next door. Yeah. Like first thing in the morning, like I swear they start at like six in the morning on sun, like every day except for Sunday, and it's to the point where you can feel the building shake. It's just really. And they're not, you know, they're not being safe. They're not being socially distant with each other. They're, most of them don't wear masks. And I just, every day I just get more and more bitter. 
about it and this has been obviously going on for months and just one day I lost it and the guy said hello and I already didn't like him before any of this started like he just he feels like kind of shifty like a salesman like he kind of I think he called me sweetheart or something and I'm just like "Mm -mm." and then I found out that he's building a three-story like three-story duplex next to my tiny home and I'm like fuck anyway so he was already on my shit list and then you know then not being able to sleep and all the anxiety of the pandemic and one day he tried to talk to me and he's like you know I'm in my own backyard and I'm just glaring and he's like hi good morning and and I'm like yes it is the morning it's very early on a Saturday morning when I should be sleeping that that wasn't me yelling and (laughs) that was that's when I think I he got tipped off that I didn't like him and then we took a, the dogs for a walk, and as we're coming back, he started trying to talk to us or something. He, he mostly talks to Gary, which is also why I don't like him. Yeah. Uh, when he has questions about, I mean, it's my fucking place too. And yeah. and, uh, and he said something. He was, I don't know. I just lost it. I started yelling at him. I I don't remember exactly what I said, other than you're you're going to kill us all with your unsafetyness. <laughs> I said, and I do remember saying, and this is probably the most ludicrous ludicrous thing I've ever said out loud, which was, this is the worst pandemic ever. Oh, we know. Worst shelter in place ever. Oh my gosh, Mari. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed, but I stand by it. <laughs> worst ever. I hear you. I just wanted him to not lay cement while I'm trying to sleep on a Saturday morning. Like, just just, just give a second. But, you know, obviously this is a little misplaced and I, I'm not proud of it. And for a while I'm like, maybe I should apologize. That was really rude. But then after not losing more sleep because of him being there and watching them all just being unmasked and talking closely to each other, I, it's I'm, that rage is back. So, you know, you can, yeah. you can stop it. <laughs> Gross that he addresses Gary and not you. He's just one of those guys, you know. Oh, I know what kind of person it is. Like, the, like I remember when that happened glaringly last year when Henry was really sick. He kept, like, experiencing um, infections. And so he had to go to the hospital and he was in isolation um, because of like potential MRSA. And so he's in isolation and doctors kept, What's uh, MRSA? uh, the, a bacterial infection. Oh, so, um, so doctors kept arriving to examine Henry and then to update the family, which is me on Henry's status. And I was like the only one there. And then I had brought Jeff with me. And the every single male doctor would address Jeff and update Jeff about Henry's oh. status. So and then ignore me completely. And I would just I would let them do it. I was like, okay, let's let's do this. Let's see who the assholes are. You know what I mean? Like, like wow. elves, assholes, Ruben. <laughs> 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 Uh, but yeah, without fail, they did it. And then if it was a female physician or a female nurse, she would address me. But consistently, every single male physician All would of them. pretend as a there. All of them? Yeah. What the hell? That's, that's insane. Yeah, even Jeff. I always keep track. I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm collecting data. Oh, <laughs> that's so gross. How, how's Henry doing? I, I, I know that he was. So, so he, um, so he stays at a skilled nursing facility. He lives in a skilled nursing facility in Long Beach that we advocated for him to enter into because it has, um, like pretty good, uh, evaluations. So he lives at this nursing facility, but so many nursing facilities have been struck by coronavirus, right? There are outbreaks at lots of them. Um, And his is no different. So uh, there's been an outbreak there and his roommate became infected and then Henry became 
infected. So, um, Henry was moved to the VA hospital and was there under observation for approximately two weeks. And apparently, like, the virus will incubate in a person for something like seven to ten days and then you'll begin to show symptoms. And so he was being monitored really closely because he's like in a really delicate state to begin with, right? Yeah. Um, given that he has Parkinson's and he had been refusing food, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so he, they, they, um, so staff observed him and he remained asymptomatic, which we were all like really, 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 um, relieved about, but at the same time, like he's isolated yeah. and yeah. He's unable to socialize really with anybody. And it's difficult for him to socialize using a phone. He doesn't. He doesn't, he can't use that kind of social technology the way that neurotypical people can. Like, it's really daunting and kind of frightening for him. It's hard enough for me. So exactly. I can't. <laughs> and you know that with schizophrenia and it, it becomes a challenge. So he is still testing positive because they're swabbing him periodically, right? To determine wow. whether or not, um, he he still reads as infectious and he still does so he's been transferred back to the skilled nursing facility and he's in isolation there and i have like this plan to go down there and like peep through the window <laughs> and, like, uh -huh. but i've got to like plan it out do you know what i mean like i've got to figure out where he is and when he's going to be in the room you don't want to surprise the wrong senior <laughs> exactly <laughs> Person, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so, I've got to go peep my uncle this week. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that one day you were able to FaceTime with him due to a very nice nurse. I did that was cool. with him one day, but I don't know how much relief or comfort it brought him because he has never interacted with a tablet. And he's never FaceTimed. So he had this look like he'd been plunged into the twilight zone. And I was like, I don't know if I'm bringing comfort or trauma to my uncles. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do it again. I think it's better if I go peep on him. Yeah. And that he'll be like, oh, the crazy bitches at the window. Like, he'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Henry. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I hope you're able to pee properly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Do you remember that episode of Married with Children where there's a peeping Tom on the loose in the neighborhood? That sounds familiar. Have I talked about it with you before? That's like one of my favorite episodes of Married with Children. That one and the anti-feminist one. Do you remember the anti-feminist one? No. Forms a club called No Ma'am. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's called no ma'am and they have t-shirts with the the woman sign on it with a slash through it right and oh. it's, it's so fucking awful <laughs> no ma'am um but the peeping tom episode is like kind of perversely romantic there's like a peeping tom neighborhood and he's peeping all the ladies right and he's showing up at their windows and he's doing the peeping thing and he hasn't peeped peg yet and peg is getting really upset that she's left <laughs> out of the front. like she's like why aren't you why aren't you peeping me what's wrong with me what's wrong with me that you like that this pervert isn't outside my window what 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 you know huh? was it the sun no oh. <laughs> so so everybody in the neighborhood gets peeped, even the women who are not considered conventionally attractive get peeped, and that's what really upsets Peg. She's like, fuck this shit. Like, I gotta get peeped. And so she's complaining to Al, and then Al realizes that it's his duty to peep his wife, like, to make her feel... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what is wrong with the 80s? Holy shit! <laughs> to, make her feel, to make her feel, um, I don't know, appreciated and admired by the neighborhood pervert. So he, um, so he gets pantyhose 
and he puts them over his head. I remember this. Near his face, and then he he um he appears outside her window, and he starts saying peep. <laughs> He starts peeping. Oh, shit. Neighborhood watch happens to be patrolling the block. You just hear, there he is! Get him! And then he's like, no! But they can't tell who he is. That's him. And that he's peeping his own house. Oh, my God. He's wearing fucking hose over his face. <laughs> See the villagers come for him. Do you know what I mean? Oh my god, that's amazing. I want to know who wrote that episode. (laughs) So I just, I wanted Peg and Kelly's uh, wardrobe so badly. Yes. Oh my god. Christina Applegate was a hero. Her wardrobe was amazing. Like, I was like, why can't I be that kind of slut? Well, for that, you know, poor-ish middle-class family, she had she had a lot of money to spend on good clothes. Oh my god, she had the best clothes. She really yeah. did. I had a boyfriend very briefly uh, when I was 15 or 16 who uh, he used to, like, hang out with her. Like, he was from L.A. He was like, oh, my L.A. boyfriends. And yeah, he hung out with her, and that was pretty cool. He wasn't that great, though. He's cute, but just nothing in there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but super cute. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I went out with him. And then, yeah, that's he didn't understand sarcasm, which you know now I'm in my forties and I'm not that into sarcasm exactly. But uh, but as as a as a child, that was kind of my my thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was, he was like, child. <laughs> which he appears in and I was I think that was around the time of Facebook or Friendster and so I was looking up all these old flames I'm like oh I found them but I have not thought about Friendster in a long time does anybody else remember Friendster oh god (laughs) it was very uh I like Friendster more than I like Facebook honestly it was so exciting new and yeah I found him and then we sort of emailed back and forth and I thought you know I'm I dated him when I was 16, now I'm in my 30s, you know, things have changed. He was exactly the same. He had no sense of humor. <laughs> That's sad. I can't tolerate that. It just, and he was, like, still angry at things that happened when I was 16 and he was 20. I'm like, you're a 20-year-old dating a 16-year-old, first of all. <laughs> I know, that's the fucking grossest. I, I had a I had a boyfriend also when I was like 15 or 16 I think it was 15 and he was in his fucking 20s and I remember one time him saying like why do you have to talk about high school all the time and I was like bitch because I am in high school like pick me up from high school asshole like, <laughs> like what do you think I'm gonna talk about oh my god <laughs> like he picked me up in front of the Catholic school. Yeah. Can you imagine dating someone that you're picking up from high school? <laughs> That's so gross. That's so gross. It's just so... Uh, speaking good times. Of, speaking of picking people up, should we... Re- <laughs> should we dive into our, um, our questions? Okay. Absolutely. We have a lot of questions, and um, if you've sent in any questions to your viewer, um, hopefully we'll get to them. If, if I can figure out this whole technology thing, um, hopefully we'll do more of these and we'll get to your questions for now. We're going to get to two that seemed kind of easier to do <laughs> on our first try. Um, so this one, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, read out this one. Hi, I'm wondering about all the women who get their pubic hair waxed. Assuming it's all grown back, and are they going to go back to waxing? I'm too old for that whole thing, thank Christ. 
Also, how horny are the youngs right now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> fucking laughed out loud when I said that. It's easy. Okay, so this is a pubic question. I've like, never successfully waxed anything. When I was 12 or 13, my mom and I ordered, like, mail ordered a waxing kit, and we did it wrong, and I, I basically, we just tried part of our legs or something, and I spent, like, a week trying to get that sticky wax off my legs. So never again. I mean, I'm sure it works for some people, but that yeah. was just unpleasant <laughs> well so i um when it comes to like pube scaping um i have not ever waxed i've never waxed anything right like you can you can wax anything um but i haven't like usually if i am <laughs> usually if i'm going to get rid of body hair I will shave it, I will pluck it, or I will laser it. Because I lasered hair gone too. Um, and I bleached it. I tried to bleach it into, uh, like, like, when you bleach it, it's intended to, like, camouflage it, right? Like, if you're light-skinned, then the bleached hair is supposed to blend into your, like, golden skin tone or whatever. But you just look like you have a blonde mustache. Like, that's I what I'm talking about. But doesn't like, the bleach get your skin, too? Like, that's I've always wondered about bleaching. Yeah, it hurts. Because um, I remember my mom bleaching her mustache when I was a kid and just thinking that's what ladies do. Like, that's part of becoming an adult like when you're an adult you have a purse with Vicks Vapor Rub and Kleenex inside of it and you also <laughs> bleach your face like that <laughs> part of becoming a woman so, like, <laughs> so I remember like my mom and it looks hysterical too like my mom would look like a walrus because it would be like this big fluffy white like this <laughs> these clouds of like cool whip on her up <laughs> and you know how beautiful my mom is so just to see her reading time magazine with her big white mustache was really fun uh, <laughs> and i kind of looked forward to it and so i remember when i entered middle school starting to become self-conscious realizing that i too had the little mexican revolutionary mustache <laughs> i was like i don't want to look like a guerrera so i gotta get rid of this so then i asked you know i was like mom can you help me and my mom was like i can help you and so she she, she walked me through the process of like preparing the bleach and applying the bleach and it fucking Stung. Like it, it was, um, it, it like, it would sting along the pores. You leave it on for, I don't know, something like 10 minutes and it stinks too. And then oh. wipe away and then you have a blonde mustache. <laughs> 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 and like if you stand in the light just right, it glows. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> having a blonde mustache like she didn't want she didn't want a blonde mustache and she um and she wanted it like just gotten rid of so she started getting electrolysis wow um and went like religiously to her to her electrolysis appointments like she committed herself to hair removal and then wow. and then as i got older i did the same thing like i got some laser treatments I don't recommend it though. It sounds painful. It's fucking painful. They fucking cook you. That's how they get rid Although, of you. Ever since I'm like 13, I've been using an epilator on my legs. And I mean, I just don't even have hair on my legs anymore because they just, after a while, they just, it doesn't grow back. I have noticed that my young friends have, um, have stopped shaving and stopped doing that. And they also seem to not be very horny. Uh, I see a lot of people on Twitter talking about 
being thirsty, but I think that's different, right? Yeah. Like wanting the attention and wanting love, but like as far as people wanting to find people to actually someday touch, it seems like people are just like, oh, I don't know how long this is going to last. And what's even the point if, you know, if we develop a relationship and then, and then we meet and there's just, you know, there's no chemistry. I don't know. What, yeah. What's your, what's your uh, read on how that's going? My read is that like most people who are sheltering in place in solitude are like super duper touch hungry right like there's like this phenomenon of like touch hunger that people have been tweeting about and some people have written about like like some people have written some lengthier prose about like that that desire and people have been kind of thinking aloud about what that will be like once we're released um and once we start reintegrating with one another um and then I've also heard like people who have chronic illness chiding uh, some folks who are um, in a panic about whether or not we'll be able to like reacclimate to touch, um, stating that like people who 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 experience chronic illness are frequently like forced uh, into isolation and and are capable of of like sensory. Uh, reintegration and that and that we're and that 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 like what we're expressing is really exaggerated um uh but i do think that people are horny <laughs> I I think anxiety really i like I, I feel like at first when when this started happening i was a little not hornier but i was like oh time alone with gary and like let's, let's do it but then after a while like the anxiety and all the uh health problems that come along with being anxious all the time, kind of, like, I mean, when you're just farting all the time, it's not sexy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, chronic flatulence is not a turn on. Um, Bringing it back to the, the, the hair thing, though, re pretty recently, I was like, you know, I think I'm ready to feel sexy, and I, again, I was, like, I, shaving, I don't use a razor, but I have, like, this little electric razor thing and I guess I got too close and then I was just like crotch itch for days and that was not sexy um so any kind of horniness that I thought I was feeling <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my, my friend old co-worker Clay just joined just in time to hear about my crotch itch hi Clay <laughs> <sighs> um I so I was thinking about people that I know who have waxed and um I did have a friend we're not friends anymore but I did have a friend who used to get her um her crotch waxed on a somewhat regular basis ouch she was kind of she was kind of a prude right <laughs> and, so, and so it shocked me that like of all my friends, it was like one who I considered to be kind of prudish. That was the crotch waxer. Um, and <laughs> I remember asking her why she got her crotch waxed. And she said that she just got tired of um, shaving. Like it was just a pain in the ass to shave. And that like, and that like it was just more convenient for her time wise to wax it and she appreciated like the unparalleled smoothness <laughs> of waxed landing strip <laughs> doesn't it though and, like when it grows back doesn't it kind of invite ingrown hairs like well that's what i was thinking too like that it would do that and um and then when i did ask her why did it like she said that like you know she appreciated the way that it felt and that she and she also said that she's super hairy like she's super oh. furry and ashamed of oh, like is and so that's why why she does it i got laser to my crotch once like i tried, I... tried to laser my bikini line and like i just wound up with a cooked crotch and i was like <laughs> I'm not, no, like it, 
Mm -mm. I don't recommend it. It's really, really, really painful. And you can smell it. Like, it smells like you're in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Mm -mm. What are you doing in the kitchen, Miriam? What are you making in the kitchen that it smells like burnt crotch? It's just it's me, Ari. It's me. We're me. Oh, yeah. We're me. Like, <laughs> so, and then, like, you were saying, like, you had bought that kit with your mom one time and you tried to use that kit. I have, um, I had a cousin who tried that. My prima came from Mexico one time, and I remember her just going on and on about wanting to wax. And she was really young, too. She was like 12 or 13. And we're like, okay. So we went to the pharmacy, <laughs> and she got, like, one of those little home wax kits. And I remember we brought it home, and I was like, oh, it's going to go wrong. It's going to go wrong. <laughs> Like those, those things are kind of intimidating. And once you had a couple nicks, unfortunate nicks, you kind of over it. Ugh. Does anybody else want to share their uh their their depilatory bleaching? Someone, on, someone I saw earlier, lavender trees mentioned that uh, they tried threading once, and it was the very very painful. I saw that up on the little scrolly thing. Threading <laughs> looks so good. Like it looks. Does good. It? Also heard that sugaring is really, really painful. Sugar, what? <laughs> sugaring, sugaring is another um, depilatory method. Um, that and, and I've heard of people again using it like in their bikini area. You can sugar. I've with never heard of that. Wow. I'm not sure how sugaring works, but it's supposed to be really effective. And it sounds really. Gentle because of the word, so it sounds deceptive. <laughs> I feel yeah. like it's not. There's no way to get rid of hair that's going to feel good. I mean, yeah. the body's meant to have hair. <laughs> uh, but luckily, my my legs are numb enough that I can just epilate the hell out of them. It doesn't even, like, you know, I could probably lose one of my legs and it's fine. Like I won't even oh, notice. Until so I fall over. Anyway, uh, let's get to the next question. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think these are live, these live things cut off after a certain time, so okay. we'll find out. Okay, this is another one. Um, I just want to say I'm a big admirer of you guys. Aw, thanks. Uh, as a bisexual Latina, I have found it incredibly difficult to come out to my Mexican parents. My brother is gay and out to my parents, but I feel like their reactions to me being bi would be completely different and rejected because I'm a girl. How do you feel I can approach this matter? I feel like my situation is more complicated because I'm a girl. Thank you, heart. No, it's heart. I, I don't know how to speak a heart emoji, so I'll just say heart. <laughs> um, so you have a brother, and, you know, <laughs> I don't have a brother. I have a sister who's, who's uh, straight. Sis, hetero, sis, sis. It's my sis, sis. Aww. <laughs> like I mean I I'm in sort of I mean I experience sort of an adjacent situation where there are three of us siblings in my family and two of us are queer one of us is a nurse <laughs> and um and uh and like in our case it was me who came out to my parents first. So, and then the coming out didn't happen once. I don't think coming, I mean, I don't relate to people with these singular coming out stories. Like to me, there's like, 
I mean, first of all, I don't even feel like it's coming out. I feel like it's more coming in where you like kind of come into your sexuality. Do you know what I mean? And you do it over and over and over. And also your sexuality changes, like the way that you relate to people changes. And so yeah. you have to like, and so like you're engaged in sort of explaining it to people um, across your lifespan. But like I first, um, told my mother about my sexuality when I was, um, I don't know, like 14 or 15. And then I came out to her again when I was in my twenties. And then I came out to my dad as queer in my twenties. And I came out to them as a lesbian initially. Right. Um, because it was just easier to use the word lesbian rather than explain like how the, the way that like my attractions were actually manifesting. Um, and then um, by the time I had like a long-term monogamous partner, um, my brother had like accepted that like he was queer too, but he felt really torn about ter telling my parents for some reason. Huh. I think I think that he felt torn about it. I think he felt torn about it being a son, and and that's why I think the question is kind of interesting that this listener um, thinks that she's going to be judged more harshly as a daughter coming out as queer, and my brother thought that he was going to be judged more harshly. Um, as uh, as a son coming out as queer, and I think that like I haven't talked about this with my brother, but like you know, I think you know my brother is like my brother's not an extroverted person, you know. So he's my brother's super nerdy and introverted, and and so he just seems really sweet. I, I, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he's really sweet. He's like a tech guy. You know what I mean? He's just a typical kind of tech guy. So, um, so he does not like to discuss relationships or, or shit like that. Um, so he was really, really, really reluctant to even talk to me about queerness and like really reluctant to talk to my parents about queerness. And then would eventually. Did he tell you before then? What? Did he talk to you about it before he talked to his yeah. parents? Yeah. Well, so when he was like, I want to say like when he was like late twenties, he called me and he was like, <sighs> he was distraught. Like he was distraught during this phone conversation, and I knew what it was. Do you know what I mean? You just I'm just. Uh -huh. Was. So he was really distraught and he wanted to come talk to me and he had told me he had something to tell me and I knew, I just knew. And so he came he came down to South California and uh, I, my my ex-wife, we were living together at the time, and then he was just being consumed by something and I knew that it had to do with like sexual identity and then he just came out and said it and I was like okay thank god you've said it now it's out this is who you are and um and then like shortly thereafter he was able to like tell my parents and he was just freaked the fuck out about what my parents were gonna do but my parents were cool with it and then <laughs> My brother has a boyfriend now and they all hang out, you know? So it turned out to be fine. But I think that like when one sibling kicks down the door, it really does make it easier for the parents to for parents to accept. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe our I think it's fortunate <laughs> that, the, that the sibling did that. Yeah, I, like maybe she could talk to her brother and try to get him on, you know, at as an ally and, and maybe he could be there or be there in spirit when she's coming out to each parent. I mean, I guess it depends on the parents too. Cause some, there are definitely some parents that are more homophobic than others and, uh, and act differently with women versus men, sons and daughters that I've heard of. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it does sound like, 
if like if if her parents get a little hypocritical or or get down on her, she can always kind of point out their hypocrisy by like, hey, but my brother, it's, you're fine with that, you know. That's that's I, I, that does sound less scary than just coming out. Ah, alone, you know. Yeah, I mean, they could do it like as a unified front. Like the two of them could could tag team and be like, "Ha!" Like we're both quit now. No, like they should. <laughs> 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 I regretted my sister. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and now we're here to recruit you. <laughs> try to do that i mean i wonder if she's discussed in detail like the process of coming out to the parents along with him and like the notion of either having him present or um having him to go to after it happens so having him yeah. to provide her with some sort of um, emotional support and then the other thing too is that like she doesn't necessarily need to do it face to face either like she could do it by text message. She could text it, right? Um, and then I think that like sometimes because you can get so caught up in a moment that the moment sort of robs you of the ability to speak. That it's cool to sometimes have a script in hand. Like mm -hmm. I'll shit. I'll, I'll fucking write out speeches. Like I'm Winston Churchill. Like sometimes I'll just be like, I need this. I need a crutch. I need a speech. So she could also write like a short coming out letter and then read it to them. Um, I do think that this whole shelter in place thing might actually be good for her in that. I mean, assuming that she's not sheltering with her parents, in that it might be good to give them some time to think about it before they respond. Because I know a lot of parents or just people when they hear news that may disturb them they might their true their first response might not be their true response like they might actually be fine with it but just have a reaction that yeah. you know what I mean yeah um and it might be good like like I definitely have had stuff like that with my parents where I told them things that upset them and then we didn't speak for a while, and that was good because if we spoke, they'd probably say something, or I'd probably say something that we would regret. And then over time, we just got back into, you know, this. Well, this is the new normal. Like I, you know, my husband has a vasectomy. Like my dad did not like that. <laughs> really? You're yeah. A he was your husband's testicular choices. Wow. Yeah, we didn't speak for like six Your months after that. Opinionated. It what? Your dad is opinionated. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, you're. That's a good point about social distancing and having the ability it, that it affords us like a different kind of luxury where we can drop a bomb on somebody and then they can't come kick our ass. Like, ha -ha, <laughs> I'll be at home. You know. <laughs> Like, I remember, I remember some years ago, I had a student tell me that she had come out to her parents, and I was like, oh, that's fucking great. And then I was like, you know, under what circumstances, how did this happen? And she said that um, she and her family had been uh, on vacation, I think it was spring break, and they had driven to the Grand Canyon, and I was like, you came out to your parents on the edge of a cliff? Like, <laughs>
I do. I do think when when you come out as bi, uh, people do generally take you less seriously, not just your okay. parents. And that's. I mean, that's just something you have to prepare for. But like, I don't. Like, ultimately, in the end, like, who cares if they're taking you seriously? Yeah. Because at least it's out there. My the whole point to me of coming out to anybody was that when I would get a girlfriend, like in the event of getting a girlfriend or whatever, I would um I would not give anyone a heart attack <laughs> and I wouldn't have to subject yeah. my girlfriend to that situation of being like, oh wait, you're coming out and you have a girlfriend, and you know it'd be easy to to, to really direct that anger at the woman. Um, yeah. I mean, that was the whole point, just to, to, for preventative measures, you know, should that yep. arise. Uh, and, but yeah, it doesn't really matter if they, if they believe you or whatever. I mean, obviously we all want to be seen by our parents and the ones that we love, but like, those are, I mean, I don't know, in the, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the validation feels really good. Like, if you can receive that validation, it feels really good. And it makes it time, you feel though. held and supported. But, like, something that I will frequently remind myself of, and I'll remind other people of it, too, is that in order for the truth to be true, people don't need to believe it. That's the great thing about the truth, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. require faith. It's not like an exercise in faith. It's not theological, right? We're not having, like, this conversation about divinity. We're having a conversation about who we want to fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> who we want to love. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, um, whether or not they believe it or they embrace it is kind of beside the point. I think that, like, declaring it or stating it is, like I said, it's, like an, it's a point of entry and, like... And once it's initiated, that dialogue will hopefully continue to, like, mature across time. And Definitely. they can take the time that they need in order to process the information. And if she suspects that they're going to have um, a, a less than ideal response, this gives them the time to, 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 to process whatever emotions they have and come down and return to whatever baseline they need to be at in order to like, uh, interact with her and, 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 and discuss, um, discuss her life with her and her identity with her, uh, calmly. Um, and like you were saying, like when, when femmes come out as bisexual, um, that takes on like a different interpretation. People react and respond differently as opposed to like when masculine people come out as bisexual. Um, but like femme sexuality tends to be dismissed anyways, right? Like mm, yeah. we're taken a lot less seriously. And so our claims, our sexual claims are also taken less seriously too. Um, uh, we're looked at like our, our sexuality is treated as something fickle, right? Um, and then the other thing too that that um, that I would also like advise that listener to keep in mind is that um, femme bisexuals are also often hypersexualized. Like that's True. how we're interpreted is as hypersexual beings, and that can um, and that can endanger us too because I've had I've been in situations where I know I was targeted for certain kinds of violence because there was this interpretation of me as an appropriate hypersexual target, right? Mm -hmm. That's entirely mm -hmm. do with um, uh, uh, a masculine person's interpretation of my sort of insatiable sexuality that had nothing to do with that person. That had to do yeah. with stereotype fantasies of bisexual femmes. Yeah. But that's Keep in mind and something to keep in mind when it comes to dating too but there are a lot of assholes out there who oh there sure are very ways towards bisexual femmes yeah. I, I definitely encountered the most assholes when i was dating another femme woman it was the things people would say like they would never dare to say if i'm with a, a, a guy or even a butch woman just things that they would say uh yeah. they think that they're in like 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 um cis masculine men will feel somehow invited to colonize you as a couple right like they'll see themselves as like 
the third person and some weird menage a trois that's happening in their head. Like, no, <laughs> fuck you. Like, get out of here. Go home. You're ugly. <laughs> Inside and out. I do. I do think that when during that time, when like, especially if she's feeling, you know, before the parents may accept it, or you know, if they ever accept it, like, regardless, a good thing to do in that meantime, when when she's feeling vulnerable, is to find community. Um, and you know, some yeah. of the community really fucking sucks. But you know, we're here for you. There's a lot of awesome. We're here. Fun- we're here. We're, home. <laughs> we're here for you, and, and you know, there's just you gotta find. And hopefully, her brother is somebody she she could go to. She doesn't really mention their relationship. Other, than, you know, she just mentions that he's gay. But like, hopefully, if not him, then there's a lot of other queers out there who will embrace you and and not. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we're going to get to today, unless you have any closing thoughts. Um, I think we're going to get cut off in ooh, nine minutes. Yeah, so so when it comes to, like, the next time we do this, people can hit us up, like, through Instagram. They can go ahead and DM us any questions they might have. Um, and they don't have to be limited to, like, uh, relationship advice or pubic hair. Like, you, like you can uh, and we're I mean, I'm not really an expert on pubic hair anyways like <laughs> <laughs> you, you've had uh, some experience Miriam what <laughs> you've had some experience well yeah I mean I've had pubic hair for most of my life but <laughs> it really make me an expert um so, so yeah so those questions can be directed to us um through Instagram or you can tweet them at us or you can email us through ask by girls um and you can also feel free to ask like literary questions uh oh you think there is life you think there is life um <laughs> brushed for some reason like it being brushed out i don't know why that thought just popped into my head but um uh yeah feel free to ask us any kind of question yeah well thanks for everyone for joining us and thanks miriam this is fun let's do it again Yay! <laughs> bye. bye guys bye 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 <laughs>